Hello pageant planet family, Brittany Nikki here, the queen of multimedia. And this week's podcast is super important. It's called, What Marketing Materials Do You Need as a Title Holder? Steven and Jesse talk about so many different things that I think that we don't know or we simply just look over as a title holder, such as how to have good ad pages so that way it brings the judge's attention to you while they're flipping through it and how to make sure you take good headshots so that way you are able to diversify yourself in case you need it for different types of promotions. Have you thought about that? And then Jesse answers the all important question. Should you tag the national pageant organization on social media while you are promoting events and doing appearances as a title holder? Hmm. To hear more and to learn more, make sure you stay tuned for this week's podcast and until next time, I will see you later. This is Brittany Nikki is signing off. Welcome to the Pageant Planet Podcast. We are very excited about today's call, but before we begin the interview, we have Jesse Ledoux, our queen of coaching, with our product of the week. Jesse, tell us about the product you discovered. Every pageant girl needs autograph cards. So we've kind of created the ultimate solution. It's the customized pageant autograph pad. So it's five and a half by six inches. So it can fit in your crown box. It can fit in your purse. And it has 40 pages that you can tear off at appearances and give your autograph away to all of your adoring fans, your sponsors. Um, but it can be perfectly customized with your headshot, your title, and your system's logo. Wow. Now where would they use this autograph pad? This autograph pad, anyway, like I said, you can take it anywhere because of its size. So if you have a, say, teeth whitening sponsor and you go to your session and you can just take out your autograph pad, write a quick thank you and give it to them and they can hang it on the wall. And that way they can use your face and use your experience and your title for their marketing, which is really the key to finding sponsors in the first place is offering to promote their system, their their company, their brand. Um, so you can use it for that. You can use it if you have an appearance at a sporting event or a parade and just have them with you at all times and you never know who you're going to meet and you never know who you're going to make a lasting impression on and that autograph card can mean the world to some people. Yeah, I've seen girls use these like even when they're out to eat and they give a a signed autograph card to their server and then that, depending on the restaurant, will actually end up on the wall for years to come like, oh my gosh, Miss so-and-so ate here. So they use it as a marketing strategy. Oh my gosh, absolutely. I can remember being at um being at like you exactly like you said, like a restaurant and someone found out that I was Miss International 2013. They said, Oh my gosh, I had no idea. I'm so honored to be serving you. So I did have a, a, a headshot in my in my bag that I was able to give them. So it's perfect to have it on hand. Okay. Do you have the dimensions for this and, and how many customized pages that they get? So like I said, it's five and a half by six, so it can fit in just about any crown box, any purse, and it has 40 pages. So um, you can get a whole bunch of them all at once. Again, you're only paying for that, you're not even paying for that customized fee realistically, you're just paying for the autograph card pad, which is an extra bonus, and it's only $21.99 for those 40 pages, and including the customization. So it really goes a long way. Wow, and is there shipping on top of that, And, and where can they go to find this? They can find it at shop.thepageantplanet.com. And again, it's called the Customized Pageant Autograph Pad. Um, And there's always free shipping. So stock up. Weight does not matter. Get a million of these because you will use them throughout your year. It's definitely something you'll want to have, not just for your fans and people you meet, but for yourself as well. Yeah, it'd be super cool. I'd like to give them to your kids way down the road. Uh, Put them in their Christmas stockings. Perfect. Every year. (laughs) Now, I mean, I think the the example shows our logo but our logo doesn't have to stay on there right no it can be completely customized either if you've created your own logo for your platform or you want to use your systems logo with the permission of your director it can absolutely be substitute substituted that's great thank you so much jesse that's a wonderful find it is thank you so much Welcome to the Pageant Planet Podcast, where we help you succeed in pageantry. Now, here's your host, Stephen Roddy. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the call. Today, Jesse, our queen of coaching, and myself, we're going to discuss what marketing materials you need and how to use them to win the crown. So, Jesse, lead us into this conversation. 
So the days are over of just being able to show up for pageant week or pageant weekend and perform. I mean, because there is so much access to you as a title holder throughout your entire reign or throughout your entire preparation, you need to make sure that you are branding yourself across the board. And with that, in addition to your paperwork, in addition to your resume, et cetera, there are certain marketing materials that will benefit you as you are preparing to compete. Gotcha. So how would you like to go about this? Do you want to just like list all the marketing materials first and then dive into each one? Or do you just want to take it one at a time? Let's take it one at a time. Um, I would say my first piece of advice for anyone going into a pageant is to, because you're going to get your headshots done, correct? So think strategically going into that photo shoot. Is there a prop you can bring for another look that relates to your pageant, your platform, your plan, your marketing, or your personality that you really want to make sure you can include in various photos, whether it's an ad page, whether it's um, a graphics page, et cetera. Um, so think about that. And also think, okay, I want to, I maybe want to do a smoldery photo for my headshot, but don't forget you want to have a variety of looks to use if you were promoting, say, a raffle or a fundraiser or an appearance that you can use to balance it out. So think of all of those opportunities to keep in mind when you're going into that photo shoot because you don't want to look back and say, oh my gosh, I wish I had a photo I could insert for a marketing component for XYZ event. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of missed opportunities here, like for girls, just bringing something red to present around Christmas time. If you need a photo for that, or if you already have a sponsor, can you like pull in their product? I mean, you already have the photographer there. It only costs you a few bucks more if that, um, and oftentimes your sponsor would probably pay to get those things edited. Um, so lots of opportunities. Now would, what are some like major holidays? that you would suggest that they um, incorporate around? And what are maybe some just laughing, head back laughing? Like what are some kind of like standard poses that you think work well too? Oh, for sure. Well, you're absolutely going to want a full length or three quarter length crown and sash picture if you have a crown and sash. Um, otherwise, just a standard full length or three quarter length. Um, that way you can use it for full page ads or sponsor thank yous. Um, that's definitely something you'll want to make sure that you have. Um, and that way you can play around with graphics next to it, add company names or company logos that have sponsored you to print out. Um, another shot, like you said, Stephen, I love a good laughing photo or something that makes you look really approachable. So if you're going to be doing an appearance in conjunction um, with a princess theme, at a library. You're not going to want that smoldery, sultry photo of your hair in your face and you with really smoky eyes. Uh, it's just not going to work as well. It's not going to give that impression. Um, and then lastly, think about the sponsors you already have. So if you know you have a teeth whitening sponsor, you're going to want a super close up, bright smile um, that you can send them and say, thank you so much for your sponsorship and that they can use in advance or in return um, or bring an outfit. If you're getting sponsored by a clothing um, site, make sure you bring that outfit to be shot in. I love love that you mentioned holidays. That is such a missed opportunity for title holders not to send out a Christmas card or a Valentine's post, et cetera. So think about those things. And then the last item you want to consider, if you have a platform that has a color that's associated with it, bring a dress, a top, an outfit that you can incorporate. However, I guess that said, if you have a photographer that's skilled with editing, they'll be able to change those colors for you. So just keep that in mind. So if you don't have time to do 45 million outfit swaps, which, I mean, gosh, I can't imagine a photographer would say no to that. <laughs> but if, if you don't have time, talk to that photographer in advance and say, these are the five looks I really want to make sure I have. And we can make up those five looks. A color for your platform, a nice smiley three-quarter length a crown and a sash, a close-up smoldery one, and then one other X factor that goes in with that, something with a prop perhaps. And you can say, okay, what do we have time for? What will this cost? And what could we maybe use some trickery to, to take up to take up less time for? Yeah, and before we jump onto the next one, something I just thought of too is like your, your fan page. If you have a fan page, it's not like you have to do a special photo for it, but just kind of keeping in mind, like what photo can I use for that? And if you don't have one, incorporate that in. I mean, social media is so big. I mean, you might as well. Cool. I completely agree. And, and with that too, think about your Facebook cover photo. Think about 
photos on Instagram. I mean, there's so many opportunities for you to change that up and you'll want to make sure even, even posting the pageant week schedule for your friends and family to follow along, use a really great professional photo of you and then add text to it. That way it's not getting lost in the shuffle and you really look polished, professional and prepared. So if a judge just happens to be peeking through your social media accounts and they see, wow, this girl not only posted the pageant schedule, but she did so in a really creative way. And that's what they can come to expect from you as a title holder is really solid, unique, personal content. Yeah, like positioned off to the left so you have plenty of room for the text on the right or something of that nature, which is cool. Yeah, and there's so many solid apps out there right now that you can do a lot of this editing yourself. Um, so even if you don't have Photoshop or you don't feel like you have um, all of those crazy skills, they do exist that are a little more um, user friendly, I guess, for those that are novices. Two that I can't live without, um, just for those listening, the first is called Aviary. It's a free app and you can play with all sorts of filters and edits and effects. The other is Word Swag, which is actually a paid app, but you can add text onto existing photos. It's so easy to use. It is so easy for promotion. So again, if you're doing an appearance and it comes up all of a sudden, but you want to go ahead and show the organization that you're bringing value and marketing to that event, just go ahead, pop your photo into works bag and type the font on top of it. It's really that simple. And those are two that I probably could not live without. Got it. Your, your phone was breaking up a little bit though. What was the first one? I got the second one. It was word swag. Yep, the first one is Aviary, A-V-I-A-R-Y. Aviary, okay, got it. All got sorts it. of filters and effects. <laughs> yeah. Where would we be without our filters? So, awesome. Okay, great. I know, right? Yeah. What's the next So, let's marketing? talk about probably the most important marketing. Okay. Yeah. All right, and what, what would you say? And that, that would be uh, your, I would say, um, I would say it's your ad page. And an ad page won't lose you the crown, I wouldn't say, but it can definitely put you in a really great position to have a leg up from the competition. Oh, yeah, I mean, nothing's worse than like, you fall in love with the contestant in the interview and you're flopping through the, uh, the program book and you see just a janky ad page. Oh my gosh, completely. And it could be anything from low quality photos or um, an amateur looking layout a lot of empty space, et cetera. You want to be strategic with that. So like we always say, you're creating that brand across the board with your wardrobe choices, with your resume, and it needs to be consistent. So keep that in mind. Um, and I always say, I know this is like way above and beyond, but find a color scheme and find a font family and use it for everything. Not only will it make your life easier, you don't have to think that much about it, but two, it just looks really polished, really professional, um, and carry that through to that ad page. And if, if an ad page is optional for your pageant, um, and I struggle with this as well, um, making the decision is I, I knew I wanted a full page ad because I knew I wanted that FaceTime with the judge when they were flipping through. Because as a judge, you do have a lot of downtime. So making sure that you have a presence. And again, if it's, if it's either getting your hair and makeup done or having an ad page, my personal suggestion is get your makeup done. I mean, don't be, don't be facetious about it, but if you're in the position to be able to have one, I would highly recommend. Got it. So Steven, can you tell me what about, what have you seen as far as ad pages or other materials that you just think, oh my gosh, I wish I could just tell this girl blank. For me, it's like quality. So if, if I was to back up just a little bit, um, I would say like when you get your photo shoot too, if you have enough time, get that professional photo that you know is going to be inside the ad page. Um, but secondary, um, one of the big things is like err on the side of professionalism in everything that you do because you're, you're judged. Like from the moment you walk in to the moment you leave, people are, you're in a competition. So every aspect of you just absolutely needs to be polished. Um, so one of the big things for me is just graphic layout. It seems like some girls just take their headshot, which is even nicely done, and then they put it off to the side, and then the text is just kind of thrown in there. And the colors just don't really work like with the colored background of their headshot. 
So having someone that really has the ability to bring all of that stuff together is really valuable and highly important because you can have a nice style font, you can have a beautiful photo, but if the colors really clash, it just doesn't work. I totally agree. And that's a question we get fairly often through our VIP membership portal. I will receive um, a headshot that a contestant wants feedback on. And so often, if there's not that contrast between the photo and the background or the outfit, et cetera, it can look really flat. So again, if you get your photos taken and you're listening to this podcast now after the fact, you look at your pictures and you say, oh my gosh, I totally think my headshot fits that bill. Call that photographer and say, you know, I really made a mistake on this. It's totally on me. You never want to insult a photographer's expertise. Um, that's what you're no, paying them for their that services. Is, yeah, that is not a, that is not a good thing. <laughs> yeah, so definitely, I mean, going into your headshot, it's their job to make you look great. It's your job to make the right styling decisions based on your industry. So feel feel comfortable saying, you know what, this was on me. I'd be willing to pay for an edit of this. Would you be willing to change the background color? Or would you be willing to see if we can maybe brighten up my top? Um, so there's just things you can do after the fact. So don't feel like all hope is lost if you've already had this photo shoot. Gotcha. Okay, so um, where can they get a pageant ad done? So pageant ads, uh, there are so many reputable um, companies and organizations that make them. Um, the most important thing you want to think about in that pageant ad is making you front and center. And you want to thank those that have contributed to your ad page, including proper logos, et cetera, always high quality graphics. Um, if you don't know where to start and you're not sure who to trust or who to rely on, um, Pageant Planet, of course, because we are the center of all things in the planet of pageantry, we do have a resource available. So you can um, reach out to us. We do both half page and full pages. Um, and probably we could work on some other sizes if you have some extra sizes. You can learn more. Um, we'll have this posted at pageantplanet.com backslash podcast. Yeah, like I decided to do it like really implement this feature because I was looking around and some people are charging like north of a hundred dollars for an ad page and so i'm like God, i think we can do it for cheaper than that and i looked i'm like yeah we can do it for at the full page color highly professional for 40 bucks and a half page for 20 bucks and i think you get like two or three revisions to it uh, but the details are on the um the sales page so if you just go backslash podcast you can find it and like always like if you're not satisfied if we can't make you happy we'll just give you your money back we we like to keep our girls happy and if we have to you know if we can't do it then yeah we'll give you your money back and you can take it somewhere else and get something that you want but it's really professional it's it, it's comparable or beats anything else that's out there for like half the price and I would also suggest whether you use pageant planet or whether you use another vendor one thing I definitely think you should do when you are preparing to work with an ad page vendor is find either looks that you really like in an ad page and maybe looks that you don't like so much but also what you've seen in your systems program book because um, you don't want to stick out like a sore thumb if you're totally off the mark um, but send that to your vendor and say, hey, listen, this is what I like in an ad page. Um, this is the direction I'd like to go. These are some things I really am not a huge fan of, so I'd like to avoid. Um, but otherwise, see what they come up with. But it's always helpful to have some direction because at the end of the day, it's still a product that represents you. And again, depending upon who you use, you never know what their style is, what their personal preference is. Trust them as an expert, but don't be shy about pushing back and saying, okay, this really doesn't communicate me. Could maybe try something else. So it's important to remember what your goal is um, and provide references. That's great. So, okay, what's the next tool in our arsenal here? So I loved what you talked about regarding holidays and other applicable um opportunities to showcase yourself aligned with popular culture because pop culture is so valuable when it comes to shareability for social media. So let's talk about, for instance, National Donut Day. I think we talked about National Donut Day on a previous call too, often <laughs> enough, but maybe it's, we didn't. It's a popular I think topic. my favorite, perhaps that's why. But if you, if you know the National Donut Day, and I'm Using this obviously as an example, if you know National Donut Day is coming up and it has some kind of relation to your platform or you just want to connect with your local donut shop, if you have a locally owned donut shop and say, hey, listen, I keep saying, hey, listen, I noticed that today. I always say to my girls, if you find yourself having <laughs> a, 
a trigger phrase, get rid of it. So I'm officially cutting out, hey, listen today. So for all those listening, no trigger phrases. Call your local donut shop and say, I'm competing in this pageant. I have X amount of daily impressions. I would love to be able to feature a donut from your shop for National Donut Day if you would be willing to sponsor me for X dollars. And of course, that depends on your level of pageant competition, your relationship with that donut shop. Um, so if they say, yes, great, go get that donut, take some pictures, allow them to share it. And you can put your local title on that picture as well. Um, or just give it to them to provide as well and see if maybe they share it in addition. So um, always be thinking about how you can integrate into current happenings and what you can do to position yourself more successfully as a title holder. Because you're not only saying, hey, I'm up to date. And two, I'm business savvy and I just made the most of National Donut Day. <laughs> That's a win-win all the way around. And you know, a lot of pageants are actually starting to incorporate things like selling ad pages, raising awareness for the organization as a phase of competition. Um, and or if not an actual scored event, certainly like what judges are taking into consideration. So the more you can get on the marketing bandwagon, the better it's going to be for you. And not only for you like in your pageant career, but just your life goals. Like after pageant the more you can get into marketing yourself and knowing how to network and position yourself in front of companies like it's going to help you in the real world i mean in our world right pageantry is the real world but the actual <laughs> outside of uh, crowns and rhinestones oh, can we even imagine such a thing i know is there is there one of those i don't know not in my world actually and not in <laughs> yours either so that's true <laughs> to, to other people i guess but not us um Okay, yeah, and what do you think about, and I might be jumping the, the gun here, business cards, like, or is that like what the headshot um, pad takes takes care of? Like, do you do the headshot pad, the, the autograph pad, yeah. instead of headshot, or instead of business cards, or I'm, I'm just getting way ahead of it? You need to have it all, Stephen. Um, so we talked, last uh, podcast, we talked about social media and having what I call networking cards. And they had your name and all your social media handles. Definitely think that's a must um, as you continue your journey as a marketing powerhouse. The autograph pads or autograph cards are so important as well. If you wanted to, you could incorporate your social media handles on the bottom of your autograph card as well and alleviate the need for the additional business card. Um, but when you're creating your autograph card or your autograph pad, just like we talked about with your photo shoot, you want to have an image with not too busy of a background that you can either be off to one side or smack dab in the middle where you can write around it because you'll want to be able to write a specialized note to all those sponsors. You'll want to be able to write uh, specialized notes to all those who have helped you along the way and anyone you meet. So that is a must have, in my opinion, for a pageant title holder is an autograph pad or an autograph card. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. And if anything, like when you show up to the event, like people want to say, I met whatever your title is. And that's exciting for people when they see the headshot there. I mean, it, it's perfect. And um, especially guys, you know, they want to line up and say, oh, I definitely met Miss Ohio. I'm from Ohio. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't feel obligated to put your phone number on there. Don't don't do that. Um yeah, so and it just looks good all the way around. Like when you show up, you have that people can some like take a photo with you. You can sign an autograph. You give it there, and then I also see and we talked about this in previous episodes too. But you have all these. You're at a restaurant. Sign it and give it one to your server because they will hang that up and it'll be there for years to come because everyone mm -hmm. wants to promote that royalty was eating at their shop. It's a form of like, hey, look at us. We're credible. You should eat here too. And when you go back to that restaurant, you can say, I almost said, hey, listen again, but I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah, pump the brakes. When you go back, you can say, oh my gosh, I can't believe you still have that on the wall. Is there a manager here? I would love to say thank you. You. And then you immediately have a conversation about potential sponsorship, hosting a fundraiser there, etc. So doing that little act of kindness then really could pay off 
in the long run. For example, I remember I was going to the same tailor when I was getting all of my Miss New York International outfits done. And then when I won Miss International, I went in the next year and I was able to bring them a new autograph card um, and they did all of my alterations for free because they were able to put it on the wall and promote it. So you never know when it's going to come back tenfold. Well, that's what I was going to say. That's the nice thing about saying, hey, is there a manager around thanking them for it? I mean, worst case scenario, you might get some free dessert. So... I mean, it, it's it's just good, good to do those I mean, favors. Best case scenario. <laughs> <laughs> Heard. So one more thing I wanted to address today is something that is a little bit controversial, a lot of um, mixed opinions on. If your national director is one of those that's really active on Facebook or Instagram, or the national account is very active on um, Instagram or Facebook, etc., do you tag them? That's a question I hear all all the time because their judges are most likely friends with them on social media. So it gives you an opportunity to have that exposure. So I can absolutely see it from both ways. My advice to those contestants who are considering this is don't overdo it. Think, think about the events and appearances or the blogs that you have in the hopper for the next month and be strategic with your choice. If you overdo it, that can be just as detrimental as never doing it. So pick up to three a month. I'll give you a max of three a month to get away with before I say you're probably overdoing it. Think about what you have coming up and what you'd want the judges to see most or what you'd want the pageant to repost. I think a lot of pageants now are doing reposts of um, or organic content from their title holders. So pick your top three, tag your director, tag the organization and see what happens from there because you never know when a judge is floating around. But I would just say be cautious of over tagging or being too aggressive on that front. What do you think about that, Steven? Oh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, if anything, it puts you like, cause contestants are certainly watching too. And you don't mm -hmm. want to show up to pageant week and everybody's like, ah, there's the suck up because not that <laughs> it's necessarily bad or that it'll hurt your score for the judges. You just don't want to have an uphill battle when you're going into an event and you're wanting to have fun and meet friends because there are so much camaraderie. You just don't want to have to overcome that barrier. Um, I understand why girls do it because they want to show their director, look, I'm so active, I'm posting, but in this situation, definitely less is more. And also like we've all had those. Okay. Well for you, have you have a, have you ever had a clinger boyfriend? That's like, <laughs> right. Jesse, like he texts you, he calls you, he's like always there. Sure. For the sake of the conversation, why not? Okay. All right. So those people get annoying. And, but, but if you have a guy that kind of knows, like he shoots you a text, he calls, especially in the dating phase and all that, like, okay, it's nice. He gives you your space, but he still reaches out and has contacts, you know, consider yourself somewhat dating your director and just don't overdo it. Cause no one likes a stage five clinger. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll even expand on that. If you're posting, if you're tagging everything with your director's information on it, nothing is going to stand out. As I always say, if, if everything is a priority, then nothing is. That's so that's why you wanna really be careful because if you have a really, maybe maybe an A-list local appearance, you'll want that to be noticed. But if it's buried amongst contacts or contacts of you at a parade or um, throwing a first pitch at a baseball game, which is all great stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong. That's Those are things you want to share and promote. Uh, but is that really the one thing you'd want your director to see or will it get lost amongst all other opportunities? So keep that in mind too because you just don't want to um, get your message mixed. Yeah, that's great. Um, one thing I forgot to bring up is when we were talking about the uh, the autograph uh, autograph pads or – um, things like that. Should they put, um, especially the last podcast, you talked about how they should have their own hashtag that mm. they created. Should they put that on any of that information? I definitely think so. Like I said, I always suggest having your marketing cards um, with your social media. But if you tr if you have like my autograph cards were eight by ten, they were they didn't fit in my crown box. So unless I knew I would have a place to carry them or set them down, um, it was difficult for me to have them with me all the time. However, my five by seven cards fit into my crown box, so they were with me all the time. So when I knew I couldn't have my eight by tens, I had my little business card size marketing cards with my social media handles. However, um, if you were able to have those other cards with you all the time, definitely your hashtag. 
I wouldn't go crazy with text because you want to make sure that the focus is on the writing that you're giving to that person. That's what they will treasure forever, but give them enough to be able to connect with you after the fact. Um, again, like Steven said, no phone number, no direct email address. Keep it clean with social media. Keep yourself safe. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Promote your overall brand and that messaging. Yeah. And the the autograph pads that we mentioned uh, at the very beginning of this podcast during the, the product promotion, there's just like a thin line of text there at the bottom. And the majority of it is, is your beautiful smiling face. So um, you won't have the opportunity to do a whole lot of text if you get it through us. Um, okay. Did we miss anything? Are we good? I, I don't think we did miss anything. So just in summary, think about long-term strategy when you're getting your photos done. Think about different looks that you can substitute in when either pop culture or appearances or pageant duties call, and you want to make sure that you have a wide range to promote. Talk with your photographer about how you can be more effective with your photos. So if it's changing a color, et cetera, to fit an awareness day um, or to fit your platform, something you want to keep in mind. Quality over quantity when it comes to your ad page. Make sure that it is crisp, it is clear, the layout fits your entire design aesthetic. Um, and then be cautious when oversharing. So post on your own page everything you're doing, but don't overshare with your director or your system. So great. So if the girls want to learn more about like how they can connect with you and work with you, where can they go to find you? They can find me by visiting pageantplanet.com backslash coaching. Awesome. Okay. Well, thanks, Jesse. Thanks, Steven. Want to ask your questions to the title holders and professionals we interview? Become a VIP girl today and get unlimited coaching from the pageant planet. Plus, ask as many questions as you'd like for only $47.